forget to subscribe and enter to be in the chance to win in our great EV giveaway, where you could win one of four electric cars. Welcome to part two of the Shanghai Motor Show. Right, let's get back to it. So one of the big unveilings at the Shanghai Motor Show was this. This is the Audi A6 e-tron concept. Now it's still just a concept, but they're planning for it to come out in 2022. And this is a beast of a sedan. So typical Audi engineering. It's going to be very impressive, probably very expensive, very fast, etc., etc. Now a couple of facts uh, about this car. It's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery, which is slung in between the two axles for perfect weight distribution. Uh, it does support fast charging up to 270 kilowatts. Um, obviously, it's got the electronic wing mirrors, which are the rigueur these days on all electric concept cars. Uh, zero to 62 in less than four seconds, which is extremely fast. And 590 pound feet of torque uh, from its 470 horsepower motors. This is going to be one complete beast, and it's going to be very, very exciting to drive. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have something a little bit smaller from Audi, which is only sold in China, and which I think you'll be very interested in seeing. Now, if you, like me, are a little bit fed up of the super expensive German luxury sedans, this might be more your cup of tea. So this is actually a small car from Audi. It's the Q2L30 e-tron. It's only sold in China, um, but it's a small little hatchback. Now, this doesn't have amazing specs, but the price will probably surprise you. It's around about 200,000 RMB, more or less, uh, and it varies depending on the specs that you actually get. Now, this has a, about a 245 kilometer range, which is not huge, um, but it's a perfect little German run around, basically. Now, it has all of the quality that you expect from an Audi, especially in here. This feels amazing quality, you know, this is all, this is actually plastic, 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 but you've got a, quite a traditional kind of gear shifter down here uh, for the e-tron. Um, it's kind of compact in here. You can get four adults in here um, and it's quite practical. Now in the boot, I think you've got 375 liters of boot space. Back seats fold down as well. You know, so if you liked the bigger models of uh, the Audis that we've seen recently, the, the large e-tron concepts, this is the same thing, but packaged in a much smaller package. Um, and at a much more reasonable price. If you wanted an Audi and a small one at a reasonable price, this is the one to get. Now behind me, we have the Audi Concept Shanghai. Now there's literally no information about this car, but I expect it to have a 300 to 400 mile range. Um, you know, Audi actually has two joint ventures in China. So this is the SAIC joint venture. They actually have a joint venture with FAW. That's in another hall. So there's actually like two Audi stands here today. Now, this is an electric concept car. I think it's pretty much production ready, um, but it's gonna be using the same kind of architecture, same kind of uh, you know technology, partially, as some of the other SAAC models. Um, as you see, great looking car. It's gonna be very popular here. These high-end premium uh, Western brands still hold a lot of um, cachet here. And so you expect this to be sold uh, to a lot of people. So behind me, we have the Beijing Radiance. Now this is a complete concept car. That's why it looks so fantastic. Massive wheels, love that. Obviously you've got some suicide doors so you can look into the interior. Now I love the interiors on these cars. Look at that. Just like a living room, reclining seats, very deep dash. I mean, very, very simple interior, completely flat floor where you can obviously fit the battery. I do like a good concept car and this really takes it to another level in terms of their design. Hopefully this is the direction they're gonna head in in the next few years, um, but we'll see. If we come around the back, quite a large bulbous rear end. In fact, this car is massive. <laughs> Didn't realize before, but it's actually very, very big. But lovely treatment of the uh, LED light at the back, big Beijing logo, fantastic, fantastic concept car.
So you join me now in the SAIC hall. Now SAIC own a lot of brands. We've got MG over there, Rowway or Wrong or you know the old Rover brand. Then you've got uh, Buick, you've got VW. It's all in one hall. And this is their latest brand. It's called Gigi Motor or IM. And this is their L7 car. So there's a few facts about this car which I want to tell you. Um, first of all, you can actually see the back has got this screen on it. I don't know how practical it is or legal it is, but it flashed up earlier, baby in car, which I thought was quite interesting. Now, this is a tie up between SAIC and Alibaba, the technology company. So they're pretty serious about the tech in this. Um, and you can tell that because it's got a ginormous screen on the interior, 39 inch widescreen display, which is huge. It's also got another 12.8 uh, inch screen uh, inside as well. Now, a few facts about this car. It's zero to 62 time is 3.9 seconds, 93 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the range is said to be about 382 miles or 615 kilometers NEDC. So not a huge range, but it does look very good. Now, I know this won't reach production. I mean, some of those um, electrical wing mirrors with the cameras in probably won't reach production, but it does look really, really nice. And I want to get the chance to drive this hopefully one day soon. So we're at the front end of the L7 here, and this really steps up in terms of design for SIAC. Now, there's a few neat features on here, which I think you might notice, but down here underneath the headlights on both sides is an LED screen or LCD screen displaying animations of, I don't know what, completely ridiculous, completely bonkers, probably won't make it to the production version, but a nice feature for this production, uh, sorry, concept car. It will be in production next year. Another interesting feature is on the roof. Now, they've used the, the bubble, the LiDAR bubble on the roof, uh, just like the ET7 from Neo. Um, and they are also making a very brave move in terms of displaying the LiDAR rather than hiding it elsewhere. Now, if you come round the side of the car, as usual, it's got massive, massive wheels, big Brembo brakes, seems to be de rigueur these days. And it's surrounded by cameras uh, down there with the, the cameras in both the the wing mirror and in the door and very sharp lines, very angular, actually a very good looking sedan from SIAC. So whereas the L7 is almost production ready, about 95% I've been told, this is a pure concept. Again, SUV, very popular here uh, as they are all around the world. Now, there aren't any specs about this car, but the design is very interesting. Now, I think it looks really good. I think it looks strong, makes a big, bold statement. Backlight looks a little bit familiar, um, but let's forget about that because it's all about the tech. Now, the guy from IM was actually telling me that this is a car where you can replace the hardware. So I don't know, in five years or 10 years, if the hardware becomes outdated, I know not enough memory or something, they can take it out for free if you own the car and replace it. I, haven't, I don't know any other manufacturers that are going to do that, but that's going to be in a production ready model next year. And that's where the time with Alibaba really comes into play. So I'm at a brand called Leap Motors. You probably won't have heard of this uh, car company. They've only been around for a couple of years. And actually their first car was this one. This is the S01. And it's like a, a sports coupe. Very interesting to actually come out on the market with this as your first car. Maybe a brave choice, a bold choice, I don't know. Now this is actually pretty reasonably priced for a kind of sporty coupe. It comes uh, from 130,000 RMB up until 150,000 RMB. Uh, it's got a 451 kilometer range um, and it has a zero to 60 time of 6.9 seconds. Now I think this is slightly awkwardly proportioned again. Um, the wheels are a little bit too small, but it's a really fantastic first attempt at creating a sporty car. Now, I want to get in this because, can I get in it? Can I get in it? Oh, there you go. Now you're pretty low down in here because it's like a sporty saloon. Red leather, because that's sporty. And for the price, an electric little sports car. What a fantastic little car. Um, it's a bit plasticky in here, plastic around here, plastic up here, um, but you can't expect much more for about uh, 15,000 pounds. So not a bad little car. But we're actually here to see another one, the TO3. So come around the corner and we'll look at the TO3 next. Now, this is the TO3 and you might see some similarities with a smart car. So um, apparently 
It's not confirmed, but they might have used some of the design language from the smart car. They might have actually used the actual chassis. Not being confirmed, it's just rumors. So this is the cheaper city run around. I actually have a friend who owns one of these um, and he says it's the best car he's ever owned. Now this is cheap. So this little car starts at uh, 60,000 RMB and goes up to 75,000 RMB. Um, it has a range again of about 400 kilometers any DC range um, and it has a 55 kilowatt hour battery in the bottom. So if we go inside, so this is your, this is your cheap little run around. It's got four proper seats. Oh, um, and they've learned some things from the, uh, the sporty one and the materials in here are slightly better, still quite plasticky, but it feels very, very solid and very well built. I've got a lot of space down here. I've got a drinks holder. I've got two small screens, um, lots of space, a lot of space above my head. Uh, again, with the sunroof as well. I've got some cameras in here, which probably detect when I'm falling asleep and to wake me up. And I think this does have some self-driving capabilities as well. Again, a fantastic little car from a brand uh, not many of us are familiar with. And I think this would be great fun to drive around the city, not going very fast. And behind me is a lorry, and a big lorry. This is a hydrogen lorry, uh, and this is their first one produced. Now they've actually got two uh, vehicles here. One is this truck, one is a van over there. Now both have a range of between 600 and 1,000 kilometers. So they have two versions, a slightly cheaper one and a slightly more expensive one, depending on the needs uh, of the company that are gonna be using it. So this uh, is a working prototype, all the tanks in the back, um, and the price of this is around 2 million RMB, so not cheap. But here in China, they're having a huge push into hydrogen. It's becoming a very important um, industry for the country. And this is just the start of what we're going to be seeing from uh, hydrogen trucks and transport in the future. It looks like a transformer as well, so it's awesome. So now we're looking at another truck, and this is by SAIC because SAA do sorry SAIC do everything here. Uh, and this is a very important truck. So this is an electric truck. Okay, it travels for about 16 hours on one charge. I don't know the distance; they haven't told us that. But 16 hours on one charge. And the most impressive thing is this is already in use. So it goes from um, a, a dock area in Shanghai out to the ships, which is in another dock area in Shanghai. But the most impressive thing is that there's six trucks in a line. The first truck has a driver. The other five trucks behind it have no drivers. That's because of this radar system. So it all follows along on one pathway. It's super interesting. This is actually happening now. It's not a test. It's not a concept. This is happening in real life right now. Oh my God, this technology is unbelievable. And now we're on the Nissan stand and behind me, we've got the Aria. So close, I can almost touch it, but unfortunately we can't get any closer than this. But just want to show you how beautiful this car actually looks. It's a massive step forward for Nissan. And I expect that very soon we will get a chance to have a go in this. I just have to say from this angle, it looks stunning in that color. What a lovely, lovely car. Soon, soon. So behind me, we have another kind of funky kind of concept car. Now, what Wuling have done is create kind of subcategory of uh, cheap, affordable, small city runarounds. And this is the, the row or the roadway or the wrong way. This is a Clever. That's the name is called the Clever. Now, they don't actually look like this with an ice cream melted on top of it. Uh, a little bit silly. But I've seen these around there in white. They're very plain. They're very simple. And there's a few interesting facts about this car. So first of all, the price. 59,999,000 RMB, um, so very cheap. It's got two seats, uh, about 260 kilometers of range. Um, ice cream's as standard, as you can see over here. Um, 950 kilos, um, 27 kilowatt hour battery, 37 kilowatt hour motor. Um, and as you come around the back, you can see this is kind of the, the vanny version, um, which hasn't got any windows in the back. Very deep boot. Um, Quite a simple interior, but that's what you get for this kind of price. These are already being sold without the ice cream on top uh, in Shanghai. You know, 260 kilometers of range at that price is fantastic. We can actually go and sit on the inside now and have a quick look. 
Um, and if you look in here, I've got these plastic paneling with some funky grass designs on it. Very traditional grills, so there's no LCD screen here. It's very uh, old school kind of dials. And then you've got the infotainment system here. You've actually got a gear knob for your park reverse, simple um, handbrake as well. This is what I love about these cars. They don't mess around with silly gadgets and stuff. It's going back to the basics at a good price uh, that everyone can afford. Hopefully we can drive one of these soon around in Shanghai. Now, if you want to know what the next MG is going to look like in the UK, look no further than here. This is the Wrongway or the Rowway brand, um, and these often come to the UK as MGs. Now, this is the Marvel R, which simply put is a technological marvel. The things that this car has is incredible, especially for the price. So the price starts at 219,000 RMB and goes up to 240,000 RMB. This has V2, V2X, V2V, v 2 I, V2N um, and V2P capabilities. It's the first car in the world to have all of those capabilities built in. V2V is vehicle to vehicle, V2P is vehicle to pedestrian, V2I is vehicle to infrastructure and V2N is vehicle to network. This has it all and it looks incredible. So wrong way always used to be slightly awkward in my eyes in terms of design. I think their uh, estate car is okay. It's a little bit old fashioned though. They're really thinking about the design here. These really sharp LED lights, kind of a shark, shark nose kind of, uh, uh, shark nose nose. Uh, and they've got this LED strip down the front as well. Now, if we come round, the interior is also very impressive. So again, details, it says Marvel here, lovely uh, metal strip and the door handle here like this. And if you come on into the interior, obviously we've got a massive screen in the middle. to stop the music. And so you've got big, big screen here, smaller screen here, uh, lots of leather and plastic leather, little um, latch there. You know, this is a very connected car. And this is what these guys are really focusing on in the future is full on connectivity. And especially for that price, just incredible. So another uh, few specs about this car, it's got a 69.9 kilowatt hour battery and it has 505 kilometers of NEDC range. Uh, fast charging, it has all of that, so 30 to 80% 80, 80 charge in 30 minutes. Two motors, 184 horsepower, goes from near, zero to 60 in about 7.9 seconds. Now they actually have a pro version of this car, um, which is even more powerful, a bit more expensive. Um, and they're thinking about launching one with a 93 kilowatt hour battery pack, um, probably on for the foreign market. It's truly, truly impressive and it's practical to boot as well, including the boot loads of space in there and a little cubby hole down there oh with a bose sound system i think <laughs> so very very impressive stuff i have got some good news this is an electric toyota so toyota have recently announced that they're going to be coming to the electric market in a big way finally um with this, the BZ4X, not a very catchy name, but BZ means beyond zero. So they're hoping to build this in China uh, and export it, I think, to Europe and the US. This is the first of, I think they said, 25 models over the next few years. I hope that's true, and I hope it's not just a pipe dream because this is potentially very exciting. They're very late to the game, obviously. You know, I'm on the, sorry, I'm on the Toyota stand. I'm surrounded by about 25 petrol cars. This is their first electric one, other than the CHR, which hasn't sold particularly well. So those familiar with Toyota will see that this kind of follows the same design language. It doesn't really push it out there in terms of design. It's a big SUV, which is probably not what we all wanted, but with 25 models coming out, I'm sure they'll have a small car in there as well. As you can see, quite bold uh, slab shapes, a little bit like the Hyundai Ionic 5. Um, and we come around the back, and again, we've got the LED light across the back, which is, is the design feature that you need to have an electric car these days. No, no petrol pipes, no gas pipes, fantastic. Quite a big sweeping screen with quite an interesting spoiler up the top as well. Um, I'm just very happy that they're actually gonna finally get in the game. I hope they're serious about it this time and I hope they're not gonna mess us about, but let's wait and see and wait for this to come onto the market soon.
Now, we know everyone loves cheap little runarounds and this one is definitely no exception. However, this is definitely not the standard color. So this is a Netta V and it's by a company called Hoson. Um, probably not heard of that one before, but what this lacks in name, this makes up for in price. So it starts at 59,900, just like the wrong way clever earlier, up to 75,900 RMB. It has a 100 kilometers an hour top speed, uh, 204 horsepower motors and 400 kilometers range from a CATL battery. So it's got all the tech, um, but I do think it looks slightly awkward. So this is actually a special version with the white wheels, pink body. I think it looks quite funky. Um, probably wouldn't buy it myself. So we can have a look on the inside because the inside is very pink as well. <laughs> so if I just get in, there's a lot of plastic in here. It's quite cheap plastic. So plastic, 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 plastic. Um, I've got a little screen up here, which is actually very nice in terms of um, keeping that very simple. I've got a bigger screen here. Now I found out earlier that this big screen over here includes a built-in TikTok app. Don't know why. Don't know why you need to watch TikTok while you're driving. Anyway, it's all there. So this is quite a, a, a brave move from a, a small car company. They've only got two cars, this one and this SUV. But I think this is a really good option for that kind of cheap city run around. So what these guys are doing is not just the pink car that we just saw, but they're doing a lot of customizations. This one's got big wheels. It's been lowered down. It's got uh, wide arches. It's got the racing splitter. It's got some tape over the headlights for some reason. I actually think this looks quite sporty and quite good. And I think if you're going to attract a new type of buyer to these cars, maybe younger people, then these sorts of cars are a really good idea. So they've actually got one here, which looks quite smart. They've got a um, very racy one over here, which has got even wider bumpers uh, and the smaller, uh, sorry, bigger wheels, it's wider arches, fantastic. The other ones are quite plain. So they've got the, the standard version over here, the gray car and the pink car. I've actually seen quite a few of these around in Shanghai. I do think they're slightly awkwardly proportioned. Um, but not a bad first attempt from a relatively new brand here in China. Now, this is the S concept and it's their newest sedan, which I think they're planning on building after the, the, the V and the U. Now, you've seen their first two cars, styling wasn't quite there. But with this, this looks stunning. Really sharp angles, like that really aggressive, like shark nose at the front small lights and knowing China this could probably be production ready within about 12 to 15 months. I think this is a very very bold statement from a relatively new brand which didn't exist just a few years ago. Now this is very exciting because we're on the Xiaopeng stand and we're here with their newest model. This is the P5 and this sits somewhere in between the G3 which I have uh, and the P7 over there. Now, not so many specs about this car so far, but there are a couple of things that I can tell you. So the first one is it's probably going to have around 600 kilometers of range, NEDC. Um, and the most important thing is the LiDAR. So this car really wants to bring LiDAR to the masses. Now, this can do city level driving without any issues uh, just using the LiDAR system. So I think just down in the bumper, there's some LiDAR um, radars and there's, they're hidden throughout the whole car. I think there's around 33 in total. There's some really unique things about this car. So if you come over, you can join me to have a quick look on the inside, I think. Now, this seat fully reclines into a cinema mode. So you can actually lay down and watch the screen inside, which is ridiculous. Um, maybe you can see it on this side as well. There you go. And there's your little bed so you can lay down in there and i think it's actually a little bit roomier than my g3 so we'll go and sit in the driver's seat and have a quick look around there a quick look around the car as well again they continued that design language the single led light strip down there very p7 like at the back and a quick clean of the car Ah, so this feels quite familiar to me, obviously uh, owning a G3 myself. We've got very similar uh, steering wheel for me. I've got the screen there, screen there, which you know I'm, I know from my G3. It feels quite roomy in here. Um, I think it's a little bit roomier than perhaps the P7. There's quite a lot of space. 
Um, not such a fan of this blue interior color, but I'm sure you can change that. Um, I'm really excited to actually try this on the road and try the LiDAR features out, because I know that Xiaopeng are really taking this very seriously and are kind of leading the way in terms of an alternative to autonomous driving. This is going to be a very exciting car to see. And we're expecting the price to probably be in between my G3 price and probably P7 price. So maybe about 200,000 RMB, but yet to be seen. Now, this is something you wouldn't expect to see at a motor show. This is a UAV, and this is from Xiaopeng as well. As you can see, it's single seater. So just for one person, um, this has been being developed for about eight years now, um, and it's chock full of technology. So this is actually the fourth generation of this. Um, now, Xiaopeng actually uh, kind of bought into this company and now own it, so it's kind of a subsidiary. Um, this is meant to be coming out at the end of 2022. Um, obviously, it's a UAV. It's got 18.5 miles of range, uh, which is about 30 minutes. It does about 45 miles an hour. Uh, it's not for like public taxis or anything like that. It's for special situations like tourist flights or for firefighting. So it can go up and maybe observe if there's fire going on. Um, and so far it's been tested with about 15,000 flights, successful flights without any issues. It's a quite a beautiful thing actually, um, quite compact. Um, I don't have any specs about the battery or the power of the motors, but I'm hoping that soon we might even be able to have a go in this. So we're at the last booth here in the SAIC hall and this is their link up with Cadillac. Now, didn't ever think that I'd be going to a Cadillac stand to review an electric car, but here we are. And this is actually the first time they've bought the show car out uh, for display. And it's a very, very good looking car. It's really sharp. It does have that Cadillac design language, which uh, some people love. Um, and this has some really, really nice features. 23 inch wheels, probably not gonna um, reach the production version. Again, they've got all these flashy lights down here. Don't know if that will reach production version either but this has around 300 kilometers of range um, that's probably to the us uh, epa standards but we're actually going to be able to see on the inside of this car now on the inside it has a 33 inch screen because we all need bigger screens uh, eventually i think the whole windscreen will be a screen eventually but you know i do think this is quite conceptual still but if you look in there that screen looks stunning back seat screens as well because you need more screens, more screens. I think it's got 19 speakers in here. Uh, and then you've got this really bold design language back here. Very thin back lights, bigger lights down there. This is a really bold statement from Cadillac. Uh, and I'm not such a fan of Cadillac myself, but this might actually change my mind. Stunning. So now we're at a stand which I guarantee you probably will not have heard of before. This is actually called Hengche, okay? And it's from a, a group called Evergrande, which actually does real estate. And so they've decided to enter the EV market because why not, you know, everyone else is doing it. So they've come to the market, not with one, not with two, nine new cars, nine. All nine of them are here. Some are uh, more finished than the others. So the Hengcha 4 is uh, definitely a concept MPV, but the number one, that bronze colored saloon, that's almost ready. So we can actually get a closer look if we go over here. Now, this does have some very impressive st stats as well. So 760 kilometers of NEDC range, massive wheels, 22 inch wheels. It does AR driving apparently, um, gonna be super luxury, this thing is huge. Look at the size of it. Whether the actual production version will actually be like this, um, it's yet to be seen. Now there's a lot of questions around this brand because who comes onto the market with nine new EVs without having any experience of it in the past? These guys think they can do it. They're saying this will go into pre-production in September this year. Let's wait and see. Uh, I think this is gonna clog up a lot of streets if it comes true, but we'll see. So this is the Hengche 5. This is the SUV version. Again, 700 kilometers of range, 21 inch wheels. That's the only specs I know at the moment. However, this one actually looks quite good. Uh, it is another giant SUV because we all need more giant SUVs, but it's actually quite smart looking. It does the flush door handles like a lot of the models are doing at the moment. It's got these quite nice orange accents on the outside, uh, top and bottom. I think it's probably either gonna be five or seven seats. Um, and it looks, 
quite nice, but it does look a little bit like a lot of the other cars uh, here today in concept form. Now, obviously there's a bit of concern that it could be like vaporware, yet to be seen. But if you look behind you over there, they have the chassis. So they're actually already starting to design and build these. Uh, that's where the batteries will fit into. So let's wait and see if this actually becomes reality. We'll see in later, later this year, probably in about September time. So I hope you've enjoyed the show today. It's been two days of walking many, many steps for me, and I haven't even covered everything. There's still a few stands that we missed. Completely ridiculous. I think the takeaway message this year is there's been a massive focus on sedans, hydrogen's getting more interest, and we're seeing much more in terms of creative concepts, good or bad. So I hope you've enjoyed this show. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, we have plenty more episodes coming from China very soon. Uh, hit the subscribe button, We've got Patreon links, YouTube memberships. And if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>